Hi, my name is Chris Elam, and I'm the choreographer for the Misnomer Dance Theater. And what you're about to hear and view is a bit of an experiment. Uh, I was speaking with Kina Poon, the writer for the article that Misnomer is featured in at, in Dance Magazine on dance and technology. And we decided that we would audio record our phone conversation as we were preparing the interview for the, the source material for the review. And what we're doing is we're taking some excerpts from the audio conversation and we're including it in a video here so that you can see some of the source content that went into the creation of the article. Um, the philosophy here is that only a small amount of content can really make it into a written article. So this here is additional information for those of you who find it of interest. I videoed our phone conversation and because the video of my holding the phone is not all that stimulating, we thought that we would uh, include some clips of the choreography so that you can see the manifestations on the stage while hearing about the conceptions. Can you just um, tell me a little bit more about your, vis your vision as an artist? Who are you? Who is Miss Nomer? And what's your dance philosophy? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I mean, uh, um, I, I've been, I've been choreographing for 17 years um, with with not more than a six month break at any given time uh, and I'm more in love with choreographing now than I was when I started which I see to be a very good sign. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm ultimately really interested in the ways that people interact with each other uh, and on the stage I'm looking to find those really sticky human situations uh, which are partially improbable um, finding awkward tendernesses, uh, ways that people attempt to understand and be understood, whether or not they're successful at doing it. Uh, I feel that the, the human effort to try to, uh, to form real connections with people is one of the most promising things that we can offer uh, as a society. So that's part of what drives me and I, I try to put that into the visual form uh, on the stage. Uh, I've also done a lot of uh, a lot of international and intercultural work and investigation. Um, I have a, a partial background in, in cultural anthropology um, from my undergraduate time, uh, and so I've, I've lived extensively in. in uh, I lived in uh, Indonesia for six months, and in Turkey for for seven months, and Cuba for for a few months, and uh, and in Brazil and such. Uh, and in each each of the times I've gone to these places, um, I've been doing kind of in-depth dance research and also collaborations, doing performances or studying and such. Uh, and I've, I've watched a lot of different dances where there's a real sense of transformation uh, occurring uh, within each of the different cultural norms and the different places where I've visited. Um, and that's impacted my work uh, choreographically a lot. I mean, the, the choreography I do is not a fusion of different dance forms. It's not, as if, it's not as if we break out into a Cuban salsa dance or into the Balinese topeng. Um, when audiences watch the work, they don't necessarily see the imprint of any other uh, dance forms. Um, and, but the influence is more in terms of a full body commitment to transformation, to really becoming another type of entity. Uh, I mean, in a place like Bali, Indonesia, where there's no traditional word for dance or theater or performance, um, the performance, what, the, the, the dance form that they're doing is considered a ritual obligation. Uh, so when they're dancing, there's not the same sense of self-consciousness that, that exists in the West, even in the most you know, committed performances, there's an awareness of the performing aspect, which is fundamentally different in, the, in that sort of environment. So it's not necessarily something that I achieve in that same way by any means. Uh, I certainly don't have the same cultural uh, basis um, for, for those sorts of connections, but I was very in influenced by watching people perform in these profoundly intensive manners. I really believe in exposure uh, of the artistic process. Uh, there's so much which is really rich and valuable that happens behind the scenes that audiences never get to see. I mean, traditionally, a, uh, a dance audience only interacts with a, a company for two hours a year, you know, when they come to the theater to see the performance and then they go home. And that's the only real interaction which occurs. Um, and I have this vision of being able to share um, all the different facets of the creative process, the things that happen in the studio, the, things that ha the, the ways that we think, the conversations, the discourse that we have, uh, the different problems which come up. Um, all the components of running a company, the stuff that we in, within the dance world take for granted as really rich and um, involving are things which I think would be of interest to our audiences 
pre-existing and new audiences, and it will help deepen people's uh, understanding and appreciation for the art form uh, and give them more of an insider's perspective so it becomes more of a familiar relation. Um, and I know that when I connect with other arts, um, I, it, it helps me if I have some sort of connection towards the artist or an understanding, at least for the artistic context. So I think that that knowledge that's important to be able to share um, has helped me feel more comfortable with getting over the hurdles of you know, of actually A, doing the, the legwork of making those things available, because it does take a lot of legwork, uh, and B, finding a way to represent us. Um, but with, you know, the dancers and myself, we talk extensively about these different processes and like what do we feel comfortable sharing, what don't we feel comfortable sharing, and, and how do you go about that. Pro go about that. But um, again, I'll go back to my international travel. I mean, one of the things which was the best facets for myself in terms of my personal development in, in traveling so much is that you learn to become comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, you you get embarrassed when you're trying to relate with people without a shared language, uh, and and you're in cultural contexts where you might make mistakes. Um, but you have to put out effort and try, um, and people appreciate that effort. So I think that I mean there are various ways to expose yourself. You know, you could be quite blatant, or you could be. I mean, there's all sorts of components and such. But I think that there are ways to do it which are which are healthy and um, and, and can and can really help um, serve a greater purpose. What other kind of web initiatives are you working on right now? I know we've, um, I've, I've seen the blog and um, documentary process and there's a lot of other things, but can you go through some of maybe the more recent initiatives or what you're thinking about putting up there? Yeah, sure. I mean, as far as uh, the, the initiatives that we're working on right now, um, we've been videoing, uh, we've been videoing pretty much everything that we do. Um, all of our rehearsals are videoed, and that's actually, in addition to being for web purposes, it's actually a lot of it's for my own choreographic process. I video all of our rehearsals, and then I can view the footage and stuff when I'm at home, um, when I'm thinking about the works. Um, but on the web, we've, we've been, at the end of every show, uh, we have computers set up with eyesights in the audience so that audience members can give their impressions as they, as they leave the theater. Uh, and we're starting to create a kind of a database on our website of various people's impressions about the work and their questions about the work. Um, it's a way of really kind of getting a sense of what people are thinking. Um, also, when we teach classes, we set up eyesights with computers outside so that students, um, after, right after the class, can ask a question uh, about some component of it, and then we'll respond to them with a video um, comment edit back. Um, and also, through that same process, over time, we will accumulate a very large, you know, a database of people's questions about the work. Um, and this is all useful for our, me as a choreographer to get a sense of how does my work translate to people uh, and also as an opportunity for me to respond to people's questions and then other people could come in and they could see that other people have asked these questions and see what their responses are. Uh, and ultimately, I mean, I'm as being part of the dance field, a lot of the questions that come up in relation to our work are questions which will come up in relation to other people's works, yeah, you know, within different aspects. So it kind of becomes a, uh, a database or resource for the, for the field in that regard. Then there's also people who, if I go perform at Summer Stages Dance, where we just performed, um, and tradition, I mean, I would say again, traditionally, a, a company tours to various um, places and an uh, audience sees that company and they will feel a bond to the work if the work is strong and interesting. Um, and then they'll go home and they'll think about that. And very few of those people will really get to interact with that company again. Uh, and there's not really any major modes of, uh, of, of coordinating that. You know, but we try to set up to have talkbacks after each performance and to have the, the computer set up right there um, and to build ways of getting people to sign up on our blog. And right away, they're, they're, then they're, they're starting to learn. It's a cultivation process of learning more about the company. and. Then there is, I mean, it's just amazing the type of emails you receive from people, people who you would not expect or who just pop up after a certain amount of months and they say, we've been tracking you and this is really exciting and we see that we could interact with your company in this way, you know, in a way that you may not have already conceived of. Um, you know, it's really important to be able to listen to people, create spaces for people to interact with you, to let them know that you're interested in hearing them and then listen to what they say and then respond. Um, and if you can build up a, a system which, in which that's not overwhelming to do, um, there's all sorts of wild um, ways that the, that the company can grow.